Hey there, Nick Jonathakis here. In this video, we're going to focus on how you can come up with open source, library, or web application ideas. And number two, we're going to really talk a little bit about, you know, how different your initial prototype might be versus what you decide to release initially. I think those are two pretty important things, at least based on feedback I get from folks who take my courses, especially my Flask one. Uh, a lot of times they're like, you know, I have all of these skills, but I'm not really sure what to develop. So the working example for this video is going to be this one open source project that I just created called Latest Releases. Now, going back to the idea aspect of it, you know, I didn't just wake up the other day and think to myself that I'm going to, you know, create this script called Latest Releases. It is going to look, you know, exactly like this and, and work exactly like that. And then I just, you know, pounded out 74 lines here of bash, like line for line until it worked. Like it was nothing like that at all. So really, uh, I just scratched my own itch. You know, I wanted to solve a problem that I was having. And I really think, uh, you know, the main takeaway for this video is that, like, if you're struggling to figure out, like, oh, I don't know what to make or whatever, then just start thinking about, like, what you do in your day-to-day -day and try to solve your own problem in however you see best fit. So in my case, when it came to this thing, latest releases, you know, I found myself doing the same pattern time and time again. So every week or so, what I would do would, uh, I would go to GitHub and I would start doing searches for, you know, things like Flask or Docker or Turbolinks or, you know, any other libraries that I really care about or tools that I care about. And I just wanted to see, like, when was the latest release made? You know, did something new come out? Is it worth for me uh, thinking about upgrading like one of my projects to use it? And, you know, this is kind of a time consuming task if you have a, a number of libraries that you want to keep tabs on, right? You know, if you have five or six of them, you know, that's five or six different browser tabs, you know, Googling for the GitHub repos for each of those, you know, it only takes a couple of minutes, but it's boring, it's tedious, it could be totally automated. So after doing that a couple of days ago for the last time, I thought to myself, like, what would be a way to automate this that it wouldn't require, you know, spending a huge amount of time up front to actually implement the solution and still be very nice to use from like my perspective. Like I wasn't thinking about, you know, what would be great for, you know, the masses, right? Like every developer in the world, right? I'm not gonna make like a full blown web application around this tool. I just wanted something quick and easy, maybe a command line tool. So that's basically what happened. So I wrote this command line tool here, latest releases, where you basically just supply a text file with a list of all the repos that you care about. And a couple of seconds later, it is going to output a table that looks like this where you have all the repos that you care about, uh, their latest release, as well as uh, when that release happened, and everything is sorted with the newest release on top. So you can very easily see, you know, what's new, basically. And, uh, you know, this is something now I run, you know, maybe once or twice a week just to keep a pulse on things. Like, I'm kind of waiting for the next version of Turbolinks to drop, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for that one. But yeah, I mean, uh, I just have a text file sitting somewhere, but honestly, this didn't even start anywhere like this. It, it absolutely, definitely, definitely didn't even uh, look like this to begin with, right? This is like the end result that is still like not super polished, but pretty good, like it's decent enough. But uh, to test this idea, what I did was I just uh, opened up Google and I know GitHub has an API. So I just Googled for something like, I don't know, GitHub uh, API get latest release, I think it was something like that. Yeah, you can see I've been to this page before. This is the one. And there is like a get the latest releases API endpoint. So all I did really was I just basically copied that as an example, you know, opened up my terminal. I just curled this, but then I went back to the API and I'm like, okay, the API endpoint that I care about is this like releases latest one. So then I just did that and I popped that in and then I curled that. And then it was like, oh, not found. Interesting. Like maybe maybe this Octocat repo doesn't have like the concept of releases. So then I just popped in Turbolinks because that was the one I really cared about just for like at the time. And then I was like, oh, nice. Like you get all this great information back from GitHub's API. So we have things like the tag name, like right here. And then down here on the bottom, we have uh, the published at. So then I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. Like using the power of, almost let me clear that, uh, using the power of Unix pipes here, we can just grep that, right? And we can grep for, uh, tag name or published ad. And let's see what we get at the end of this. Yeah, there we go. And then also like with curl, you can also do uh, ask there to, to make it silent so you don't see its output. And that got me basically the prototype, like literally took me a minute to do this the first time I was going through it. And for me, if I just wanted to stop here, 
like this would be sort of kind of good enough, right? It's like, well, you know, maybe the next step after this would be putting all of this into a bash script and just having, I don't know, like 10 curl commands that curl different repos, you know, add some new lines of spaces between them. And then I can very easily see like the latest tag and publish time for all of these repos. Done, deal, done in five minutes. But then I thought, you know what, you know, maybe other folks might find this a little bit useful. So maybe it would be kind of cool to turn this into an open source project. So what I ended up doing was I did create that bash script really quick. And, you know, I did put in a whole bunch of different uh, repos, but I found a couple of them that just didn't work. So like if I go to uh, my invoice script here, and I don't care about this specifically because I know when a new release happens since like I literally developed it, but this does have an example of it not working. So you can see here, there's no tag name and there's no published at. And that's not really something I would have known beforehand, like before starting the script, right? It's something I encountered while developing. And I think like, you know, another real big takeaway from this video is you just have to get in there, you know, get your hands dirty, start coding. You know, you do need to plan things out. It's always a good idea to do that, but don't really focus so much on the theory, right? Just really get the code out there because once you start working with the code, you're going to start running into problems like this, or, you know, you know, in your case, you're not going to be creating this script specifically, but in your case, you know, you'll find uh, whatever problems you have and you're like, oh, well, that's uh, a problem I need to solve. And then you can go and look and solve it. And before you know it, things are going to work. And there's like no way for you to have thought to do that beforehand, right? It's like you're guiding your experience based on like real world experience, not uh, just planning or whatever. So in my case, what I ended up doing, uh, you know, I'm not going to really go over the motions here because that's too specific for the script, but I just started Googling around uh, different GitHub API endpoints. And ultimately, you know, I did find this one endpoint that uh, instead of looking for the latest releases, you can look for uh, just the tags and then you can do per page one to get the latest tag. But unfortunately, that doesn't get me the uh, the time. It only gets me the latest tag. So I had to parse that out, get the commit ID, and then do a second API call somewhere down here where, uh, yeah, I mean, it ultimately gives me the information I want, but it took two API calls to get there. And then I just combine all the output and blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe at some point I'll do a future video really going over the script implementation details, but uh, that's not for this video here. But in the end, you know, while I was messing around with doing all of this, uh, I got it all to work. And eventually I ran into another issue here where I ended up being rate limited by GitHub's API. So I'm not too used to using GitHub's API from the command line and uh, totally slipped my mind that they're pretty strict when it comes to API rate limits. So you only can execute uh, 60 API calls per hour for unauthenticated accounts. And, you know, when I had a text file, with like seven or eight repos in it, and I was just, you know, rerunning that script over and over and over again, you know, only, it only took me about 10 minutes to hit that rate limit. So then uh, when you are rate limited by GitHub, you know, they give you some instructions on how you can get around that, right? And I put those into the documentation here. So like if you actually get rate limited while using this script, you'll get these three steps here. It's really super easy. You just go to this URL. This is your personal settings. Make a personal access token. And then, uh, you know, you create an auth file. That's something the script uses. And then you just put in your credentials there and it's going to use them uh, in, in the future. So the next time you run the command, then you can do up to 5,000 per hour. So totally not going to run into the rate limit. You know, if you're executing this, like even like once a day, it's going to be no problem. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all of these things really came out after experience, right? I never would have even thought to initially code this script with this behavior of uh, dealing with rate limits without knowing that it was an actual problem. So again, like, you know, the real takeaway there is uh, just get into the code, start coding. And now it's like, you know, you make your script a little bit more robust, like it's a little bit nicer, a little bit better. You know, then if you decide that you do want to open source it, then there's like the last step, which is really, you know, putting the polish onto it and uh, maybe running it through a linter. In my case, I'm using shell check with, uh, you know, using, using uh, GitHub Actions over here. And also, you know, creating like a license file and a change log and uh, documentation. So, you know, I don't want to get into the details of the docs here, but if you are going to open source something, you know, it does take a little bit of time to write these docs. I mean, honestly, the prototype for me took a couple of minutes to do, but end to end, getting all of this all set up and ready to go was closer to like two or three hours, right? That's like really polishing the script, refactoring it many, many different times, writing the documentation, getting uh, GitHub action set up and getting all of this wired up and ready to go. So that is an investment to make, but now it's like I have this nice little script that I can run uh, anytime I want. If other folks want to use it, it's there. 
And uh, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I'm pretty sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about open sourcing some work or working on some web application, you know, anything like that. And uh, yeah, you know, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.